feel like we were just here. I, I'm Thomas yeah. Rankar, Ryan Snyder. Yeah, we were just here. We were just doing this a few hours ago. Uh, we've got some breaking news for you. So, Ryan, please break the news for people. I'll get out of the way. Right. Uh, I mean, if you've been watching the, uh, the the podcast, what, last Thursday and now to, to earlier today, of course, Tyke Hayes, I, I think many fans kind of thought that this one was coming. Uh, Sean and I both had picks in since last week. Uh, announced, of course, today would be his decision uh, on September 25th. So, uh, you know, this this one was kind of expected. Uh, just look at the visits, right? Ten visits over the span of um, a little under two years always says a lot. You know, he's been to West Virginia, Pitt, Ohio State, a couple other schools. But, I mean, whenever you have a player who's just constantly visiting Penn State, it, it really kind of paints the picture of, um, you know, who, who should be the team to beat there. You know, when I look at Tyke as a player, uh, we'll get into his, you know, as what he brings as a player here in a second. But like production, man, uh, 3,700 yards as an underclassman, over 50 touchdowns, class 4A player of the year as a freshman, two-time All-State. I mean, I can keep going. I mean, he fit at 15-1 for Aliquippa last year. I think they were like 14-1 the year before. They're currently 4-0. And a lot, I mean, obviously, Aliquippa is a powerhouse program. They always produce great players. And, and Tyke is, is kind of the next in line there. So, you know, this is one of those guys where, as we talked about earlier on the podcast, like Penn State has such a, a wide net for running back. And with it being so early in the 2025 class, it was hard for us to kind of gauge, you know, where he ranks, where all these guys kind of ranked. Right. I mean, yeah. it's usually something yeah. you, you kind of learn more down the road. Um, but in, in my eyes and just kind of what I've gathered here, it, this is too productive of a player uh, to, to pass up. And if he's ready to make a move now. Uh, even if you have two running backs, because of course Keandre Barker's already committed, uh, you, yeah. you, you just can't you can't turn down these kind of a player. Uh, this this kind of is a he player. is he? Yeah. And I know that the very different runner. We can talk about that in a second. But is he a comparison in terms of what you just said of too productive to turn down London Montgomery? Is that a fair comparison of maybe not the highest got rated guy that Penn State might have on their board, yeah. but local and uh, the ties are strong. Just make it happen because we think this is a guy who can be productive. Oh, I mean, I, Ty Key, I would say, is a beyond that um, mm -hmm. as far as, like, uh, the quality of player. And that's not a shot at London. You know, London was kind of a guy who earned his offer, came a yep. little later. I mean, Ty Key had an offer uh, December 2021, you know, so right after his freshman year. I mean, we always knew he would be a top guy. It's so funny. Like, I feel sometimes that we talk down on guys. I feel like even the way we're kind right. of doing it right now. Ty so I let, let, me, because let, me, let me put this up here again. Here. Go ahead. It's also it's also because he's a three star football player because you know you look at the star rankings and it's three forty nine mm -hmm. in the on three industry ranking in Penn State as you mentioned just now has had so many star running backs so it's a it's a it's a comparative thing because you're comparing him to the players he's going to join in the room and also the rest of the players in his class and I know that fans you know I, we both work in the industry that does these rankings so we're not going to say don't look at the rankings but also. They can only tell you so much, and that's why we do, you know, film studies, and why we look at these guys and you scout them and how they bring. There's just there's some nuance and some layering here uh, when it comes to these running back commits. I think that is that is super interesting. Um, yeah, and that that's go ahead, go ahead. Uh, well, the one other thing I'd say too is just like well, we're gonna look at stars. Like remember that it's September 25th, 2023 for the 2025 class. I mean, this is gonna yeah. be switched up so much uh here in in the months ahead i mean he's still a top 10 player in pennsylvania a guy that they've long coveted so i mean ty Key's a great player uh somebody that i'm really kind of looking forward to to watching more i got to watch him last year against bishop mcdevitt mcdevitt got the the best of aliquippa in that game man but you can just see uh the way this is vision the way he hits these holes i mean there's there's a lot there you compared him to katron allen earlier in the pod and uh, I don't I don't disagree with that at all. I mean, just just kind of the vision, the the straightforwardness and, and way he gets after it. You know, I think I honest, honestly, like there's a lot here that tells me he's a four star player. The one thing we're kind of missing that I think that would would help with that and, and really with Charles, because Charles is so big on on testing is is that testing numbers. Yep. You know, we don't, we don't have accurate 40 times and things like that uh, for Ty Key. And yeah, he's not a burner. Right. I mean, there, there's yep. there's certainly some guys who are faster than him, but. I mean, man, when you're talking about vision and productiveness and and just I said productiveness, production, I meant to say, uh, yeah, there's uh, there's few guys that that match up against this. I mean, in a lot of ways, his film is as impressive as Quentin Martin in, in, in different ways. No, I completely agree with you there. And you talk about um, I think I, I called it the soft skills of the position. They're not even soft skills. Just watch the different number of moves he has and how he executes them on the football field. And I know it's not 
com competition is always a thing, like the level of competition you're going up against. But if you want to make these evaluations on what does he bring to the table, he brings a lot to the table as a running back in, in the different ways he can make guys miss. He's got some good straight line speed, but just natural running ability and the, in, the intuitiveness of when do I juke right there when do i juke when do i stiff arm when do i lower my shoulder or when do i try to jump over somebody like he mm -hmm. has on all of these these highlight films and you know we're not seeing all the plays he's not making and we'll do that later in his film room but if you're just looking at the surface level this is a really good running back now if you want to talk about athlete and athletics and all of those things and that's where the star ranking as you mentioned with charles comes in yeah 5 11 190 uh and not great profile of speed on film then yeah, that makes sense where he'd be a three star, and you got to then prove over time that you were a guy that can be a um, a four star player. But I think you know, looking at him, and I I, I said this earlier, going to be a lot of repetition if you watch the podcast earlier today. Um, go to his Twitter account and watch his lifting videos. This is a thick kid. This is a kid who um, is putting in the work in the weight room and is going to be a strong, powerful runner. And if you add in all those elusive skills and the ability to break tackles and get yards after contact, I love it. I love players that do more than the system allows because they have the ability to make those plays. So Tyke Hayes, I think we both agree, is a really good football player joining the class of 2024. Anything else in terms of little nuggets or anything to wrap up, Tyke, before we start to look ahead a little bit in this class? Uh, I, I would say, you know, another another big commitment. Well, I mean, this is don't wrong, this is a total tag team with Jay One Sider. Uh, yeah. Terry Smith, you know, obviously Terry oversees Pittsburgh and always kinds of get gets the ball rolling, you know, w with those Whippio guys. And, uh, you know, Terry will get a lot of credit for that. And, and, and but Jay Wan really deserves a lot of credit for it, too, because, you know, Terry usually gets the ball rolling. And then it's kind of more in Jay Wan's court then of building that relationship, kind of deciding where to take that running back court. Uh, so both those guys really kind of, um, you know, did, did a great job with this recruitment, of course. But uh other than that, I mean, I'm just kind of excited. I have another reason to go to Pittsburgh now, right? I was quitting <laughs> Martin and Speco yeah. and Gonzalez. I'm really hoping they all make the Whitfield Championship this year because I'd like to just combine that trip. <laughs> Pack all it all in. <laughs> yeah, I've done enough trips to Ohio to see quarterbacks over the years. I'd like to just, you know, try and do one trip out to Pittsburgh if I can. So uh, Aliquippa should be there, right? 4-0 uh, right now. Uh, 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 last two years, you know, look how far they've made it. So they, they certainly should be one of those teams in the Whippeal and, and Central Catholics looking that way as well. And Belford is the defending state championship. So let's uh, let's all pray that uh, they all get there this year and, and I have a reason to go out and see those guys. <laughs> Uh, we're all we're all praying for the the hopes and dreams of uh, thousands of high school kids just for Ryan's schedule and for his travel <laughs> arrangements. I love it. I love it. That's uh, that's the sort of uh, efficiency we're looking for from Ryan and his uh, his recruiting prowess going to all these high school games. And by the way, just kudos to you for having all the information and, and going to all these games and getting the ground level view of all these football players. So an invaluable person to follow over at bluewhiteillustrated.com, which you can sign up right now and get insider access so you know about Tyke Hayes um, and all the things going on behind the scenes before they become public. That's where you get the information. And by the way, as somebody who has been on the outside for longer than I've been on the inside, and then when I got here, I was like, oh, <laughs> this is what I was missing. Oh, okay. Ryan, Nate, Greg, Sean, they all do a great job. Uh, so what's coming up next for the class of 2024? Four commits. What do you see? Uh, 2025, excuse me. What do you see going forward for this class? Good job, buddy. I didn't have to correct you on that one. I'm proud of you. Uh, I, will there be more commitments here right off the whiteout? I don't really see anybody who's like ready to jump in, but you, we have a bunch of those guys, right, who, who we know are leaning towards Penn State. So let's see if anything comes over uh, the next week or two. Like I said, be, that'll be really something I focus on here over the next 72 hours or so. It's It's been so hectic up there. I haven't really been able to catch up with too many people. But, you know, all you got to do is just kind of check out the recruit reactions, check out some of the other stuff we've produced here. You know, Commitment Watch Story last week kind of laid out who the guys who I can see myself putting in picks for here soon. Uh, I mean, they're they're in great shape with a ton of guys. And we say this every year. Right. I mean, there's a reason that 2024 class is pretty much done. It's because yeah. they, you know, Ohio State's in this rhythm. Michigan's in this rhythm. A lot of these massive programs are in this rhythm where, uh, you know, they're able to wrap up their current classes early. And when you stay in that pattern and you're able to get a head start on the next class for this year, 2025, you just kind of keep keep stacking them up every year so yeah you know, i wouldn't be shocked at all if penn state has a few more commitments here by the end of the season 
Is there going to be anybody here in the next week or two? I'm not really ready to go there yet, but you know, they have two four-star players already uh, committed. Of course, DJ McClary just committed the other day or just yesterday, excuse me. Uh, Keandre Barker has been committed for a while too, running back out of Woodlands. And then of course, Omari Gaines as well. So two four-stars, two three-stars right now. And uh, you know, Hayes, man, Hayes keeps doing his thing, maybe shows up at a camp or two, puts in some verified numbers. I, I got to check. I don't believe he's ran track, but I, I'll have to double check on that. Maybe he has run some and I got to find those numbers. But I think we get just get some more verified numbers out there. The, the film certainly speaks for itself. It certainly does. And we'll be getting to all of that at some point in T Frank's film room. Middle of the football season is the best time to do more film study and uh, look down, uh, try to track down high school film. But we'll get it done because that's what we do. No excuses, just success here on the Blue White Illustrated YouTube channel, bluewhiteillustrated.com. I'm Thomas Frank Carr. Our second breaking news video in as many days. So Penn State football fans, enjoy the whiteout win and the afterglow from it. We'll be back whenever more news breaks here. And be sure, subscribe so you don't miss it.